In this video, we're taking a look at inverted hammer and shooting star patterns. This is one of my favorite candlestick patterns uh, because it is easy to understand. It has a small body or perhaps even no body, uh, an unchanged open to close, if you will. It normally has uh, it normally has a little bit of a stub underneath, but it doesn't have to. It can not break down at all. Uh, and then you've got the long wick to the upside. And the difference between a shooting star and an inverted hammer is simply where it's placed. If it's at the top of an uptrend, then it's a shooting star. It's supposed to be a star streaking across the night sky, falling to earth. So, of course, it's a bearish sign. If it's at the bottom of a downtrend, it's an inverted hammer because, well, it looks like a hammer, but upside down. Think about what these candlesticks mean. You know, remember, it's all about psychology of candlesticks. It's what tells us what's going on. So, you know, you have your colored in candlestick, and it doesn't matter the color. Well, how did this day play out? You can see that the sellers came in, but the buyers came in in a strong move to the upside, but eventually failed. So think about all of the people that are trapped in this trade along this wick. They're in trouble if price goes against them. So at the top of a down or at the top of a uptrend, you can see that we have rallied and then failed to confirm the rally. And once we break down below the bottom of the stick, everybody here is losing. So of course they have to turn around and sell their stock to close out their position so it becomes a bit self-fulfilling. You know, if if you're trading a day that looks like this and you you know, say you buy here and things look really good for most of the day and suddenly you're losing money and the next day you you wake up and you're losing money even even in a quicker manner you're going to get upset and you're going to get out of the market so that's how the shooting star works now the inverted hammer kind of the same thing but ironically the exact opposite and what i mean by that is you know same candlestick pattern uh, but it's at the bottom of a downtrend so what you're seeing here is, you know, sellers are coming in and they're pushing prices lower. Well, what happens if you get in this candlestick, you know, sometime during this day and, you know, it goes against you a little bit, but you close out the day and you feel pretty good. You think, okay, fine. The downtrend's continuing. You know, what does this mean? Well, this can mean a lot of different things. If it breaks down below the bottom, it's a simple continuation. You can see that the buyers had tried to push prices higher, but failed. So that is what you would expect. So this day being in the middle of a move lower might look something like that. And then we drift even further. Okay, that's fine. That's great. But what happens if you have this day, you, you start shorting, you know, somewhere around here and it goes against you a little bit, but you're in profit. Well, what happens if the next day looks something like this? You know, this is a positive candlestick. Well, you've got a problem because not only are you losing money, but everybody who shorted that day or that hour, whatever it is, is now losing money as well. And that's a breach of major resistance. That's an inverted hammer. So think of it this way. In a sense, these are basically dojis. Because what you're waiting for is a break in one direction or the other of this massive move. If we break down, it shows bearish pressure. Well, if you're in a downtrend, that's fine. But if you're in an uptrend, that's a problem. If we break above there, it shows bullish pressure. And remember, you know, failed candlesticks can be a signal in and of themselves. You know, at this point, really what you're paying attention to is resistance and support. There's support underneath, there's resistance above. And uh, if the support gets broken, then that's bearish. If the resistance gets broken, that's bullish. That's so really how you need to look at this. Just think about the psychology. Think about what the line graph looks like for that hour, day, five minutes, whatever. Now, obviously, on higher time frames, these candlesticks mean more. And they also mean more if accompanied by a support and resistance level that matters on the chart. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Right here, we had a strong move higher. We formed a shooting star. 
broke below it, and you can see that was the beginning of a move lower. And speaking of failed candlesticks, you can see that this hammer caused a little bit of a rally, but once you break down below that hammer, that's a very negative sign. That's a broken candlestick. That's another broken candlestick. So you can see that we just came back to fill the gap. Now, these are one-hour candlesticks, but this would be the same daily. Five minutes doesn't matter. Here's another shooting star that almost got broken to the upside, but it didn't. So you had a shooting star, first sign of trouble, uh, then this massive bearish candle, another sign of trouble, and we turn things around. Now, as I record this, the Friday session formed on the hourly chart, an inverted hammer, and we have broken above it. That's a pretty bullish sign. That shows that perhaps the downtrend over the last couple of days is ending. Buyers are stepping in, and more importantly, short sellers are covering. I cannot stress this enough. You want to trade with the trend, but you also want to trade at support and resistance, and you want to think about what the players involved in the market are experiencing, because that's ultimately what drives the market. Here's a candlestick that is interesting because it's at the bottom of a downtrend. It's not at the very bottom where you really want to see it. But once you gap above this, this attempt to push this market down, you can see that we went much higher. And why? Well, because everybody who shorted in that candlestick is losing money. Think about people that are trapped and take advantage of it. That's really what trading is because you need that momentum. They've got to come in and they've got to uh, panic and get out of their position and push it in your favor. So as you can see, uh, the shooting stars you want at extreme highs or lows, they do happen in the middle, but they don't matter as much, obviously. And the more extended a market gets, the better a shooting star is. So let's go ahead and take a look at the daily chart. Um, there you go. So here's a nice move higher shooting star preceded by hammer. We broke through the hammer. That's a failed stick. That's a proven stick. And we broke down somewhat significantly there for a few weeks. Um, and you can see that as time goes by, the shooting star did fire off a signal. Um, shooting star here after a nice bounce from a hammer right at previous support. Excellent sell signal. Shooting star here at a gap, which should offer resistance. Excellent sell signal. This shooting star at this previous support and resistance line again at 245 or so. You can see it repeats itself on and on and on. Pay attention to these candlesticks. They matter. They matter a lot. So with your top-down analysis, you recognize that there is an inverted hammer there that has been broken two days in a row. Uh, but before that, we formed a hammer. Let's go back to the hourly chart. You can see that this inverted hammer has been broken to the upside. So let's go back to the hourly chart. Now that we have this inverted hammer here, it looks like the buyers are really starting to demand a lot here uh, around 244. So this move uh, is starting to make sense. It probably has legs up to 229 or 230 or so. It's not a guaranteed move, but it certainly shows that there's resiliency there. That's the type of top-down trading you need to do to be a resilient and successful day trader.